thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this lecture. And uh, I would like to thank uh, SMF and SMAI to uh, let us organize this, uh, this SEMRAX, which is a, a very nice uh, feature of the mathematical community, I guess, in France. So uh, I will talk about uh, wind energy uh, in my first talk, and I will give a second one uh, related to uh, uh, what uh, <coughs> we have uh, heard this week regarding optimization uh, for uh, uh, bioreactors. I'm, I'm talking about uh, the, the talk of uh, Amira and the one of Simon yesterday, so it will be related to what you, what you heard this week. So I, both of my talks will be approximately 30 minutes. Uh, of course, don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to ask questions within the talks, it's, uh, it's quite informal, okay. So this, this first one is a, a work done mainly with Mireille Bossi. Mireille is a research director at uh, Sophie Antipolis. She was actually my uh, uh, postdoc advisor uh, uh, 10 years ago at, at Sophia. And then I moved to, Mont to, to Grenoble to do some fluid mechanics, but I, 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 I keep a strong collaboration with, uh, with Mireille. And we work uh, with uh, Philippe Drobinski, who is a geophysicist at uh, IPSL and Ecole Polytechnique at CNRS, and uh, Christian Paris, who is an engineer at Inria Chile, where we work also for this, uh, for, for this uh, wind energy production uh, theme. And uh, most of the, of the work that, have, that will be presented here has been uh, funded by uh, Inria, of course, and ADEM. Uh, so I wanted to, to, to let you know. So SDM holds for stochastic downscaling method. Okay, so each time you see SDM, that's what it means. It means, sorry. So the, the challenges are to provide some uh, small scale simulations for the wind uh, uh, at the scale of a wind farm, for example. Okay, and unfortunately, for the moment, the, the mesoscale simulations, uh, the, the, the meteorological tools that we that we have today, are not able to provide a um, uh, wind simulation at a finer mesh than maybe one kilometer in uh, in the horizontal scale and, and a few tens of meters in the in the vertical. Okay, so if you want to uh, uh, consider uh, an area of a few kilometers square for uh, for a wind farm, you have to downscale your model to have finer informations. So for that, of course, in fluid mechanics and geophysics, there are a lot of tools okay, based on, uh, on grid refinement, for example. So I, I'm not at all going to talk about that. What I want to, to introduce today is a, is a quite new method based on uh, uh, stochastic algorithms and particles uh, that will use the mesoscale provided by uh, some deterministic simulations it can be also provided by data or whatever you want. And the, the stochastic downscaling method will, will uh, launch a, a small scale simulation on the region of interest, such as a wind farm, for example. So SDM and WindPose, which is the software related to this method, work on a smaller domain and a finer mesh. With boundary conditions, as, as I told you, such as mesoscale data provided by uh, the, the Meteo France or WARF, the, the, the traditional uh, meteorological solver used in the US and in Europe. And, or it can be also by reconstructed boundary velocities from measurements, data, whatever you want. Okay? So the, the, the principle is the following, is that you, you, you throw a, a large number of particles inside your, your domain and you, you run a Lagrange model that I will uh, present uh, afterwards, for which uh, you, we use a, a, f a fluid particle uh, uh, discretization. Okay? And uh, th these fluid particles follow some uh, stochastic, the, stochastic uh, differential equations that I will introduce. So the, the, main, the main point of, of that kind of simulation is that 
thanks to the particular um, uh, discretization that we use with, with fluid particles, Afterwards, we can, of course, average the particle properties to, to obtain some, some, uh, some uh, mean velocities at, at some locations of the, of the fluid. But we can also obtain turbulence and second order and, 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 and higher momentums of the, of the velocity, for example, which means that together with the mean information that is, that is uh, required to obtain, so for example, the, the, the wind speed, you can also have some error bars and confidence intervals. That's, that's very important, because the, 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 the stochastic uh, nature of the, of the model uh, allows to obtain both the, 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 the mean quantities and the, the second moments. OK, so again, the computational domain is one or several cells of a large-scale simulation. We want to downscale again. Boundary condition I told you about. And uh, then inside, inside our, our, our domain, we use this Lagrangian model, which has no stability condition. Actually, I will come back to that. And uh, the statistical advantages that I just told, told you about, which is that uh, to obtain the, the, the error bars, you don't need to, to run the code many times with a different boundary condition, different initial conditions, etc., and, and do some sensibility analysis. You can do this directly th thanks to the, 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 the stochastic nature of the model. OK, and uh, so SDM is somehow a new method. Actually, it has been uh, developed in, uh, in the, the 80s by uh, Stephen Pope, a physician in the US. But he only used this for uh, uh, reactive fluids at very small scales. And uh, the, the, main, the main point of, of our work was to, 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 to use that kind of method, but at a much larger scale for, the, for geophysical fluids. Okay. And of course, it raised it raises new problems and modeling, numerical uh, discretization, well posedness of, uh, of uh, stochastic systems, etc. Okay, so the outline is the following. I will uh, do a, a brief introduction on, on turbulent fluids. Then I will talk about the SDM model, and, and then I will I will talk about validation because that's uh, we have new new results regarding this. So um, the the Reynolds decomposition, maybe some of you know about that. So uh, you, you just write your velocity, pressure, and whatever, whatever parameter function that you have as the sum of its mean and its uh, turbulent part or its deviation to the mean. Okay? And uh, this deviation depends on uh, alea omega. Okay? And uh, of course, you recover the, the, the mean part thanks to, uh, to uh, an, an averaging, an, inter, an integral, over dp, which is the, the measure. Okay, and um, and uh, you plug this into the the Navier-Stokes equation or Euler equations uh, as usual. And if you take the brackets of this, uh, of course, you have the the linear parts provide uh, bra bracket uh, terms like this one, and for the nonlinear parts. You have uh, well, you have some kind of problem, which means that if you call this bracket of u i, if you call it v i, for example, you don't have an equation for v i, because in the equation of v i, you have v i here, you have v i here, you have p here, okay, but here you have quantities that depend on u i, uh, on u i u j, okay, here in. Thanks to the to the nonlinear term, so you cannot close the system. That's that's the the traditional um, problem with the, with this decomposition. So you you can imagine that you can uh, uh, try to obtain the equation for the second moment. So you write the equation of the second order. You take the brackets of this. So if you call it v again, you 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 can try to have an equation for v. But if you do this, because of the nonlinear terms, you obtain a third order terms, et cetera. So each time you want to have uh, an equation for the n nth moment of, of, the, of the velocity, you have the momentum number n, n plus 1, which comes into the equation, and, and, so, and, so, and so on, and so on. So you cannot close the system. So you have 
Of course, different, different ways to close that. Smagorinsky, Kay Epsilon, many, the literature is, is, uh, is tremendous on, on that point. And uh, of course, it, uh, the, the, the main thing is to give a parametrization of, of that kind of, of term. And if you do it at the, at, in the first equation, you, you, call, you call it uh, uh, closure of, of order one, order two, if you, if you take two equations, etc. Okay, so that's the way uh, Rant, which holds for Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, uh, works. So in the Lagrangian approach, uh, we will describe the, 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 the fluid thanks to particles with a state vector which is position, velocity, and some other physical uh, quantities such as temperature or salinity if you are in the ocean, uh, humidity if you are in the, in the atmosphere, etc. But I will, I will focus on X and U. Um, and this, this is typical of Langevin type models and uh, the associated system of, of uh, SDEs, of course, that we are going to, to write have to be consistent in a way with uh, Euler or Navier-Stokes. Okay, you could, if you want to, to, down, to downscale Navier-Stokes or Euler in a, in a small box, the, the model that you run in the small box has to be consistent in a way with the, with the large-scale model. Okay? Um, so this is how it, it, it works. So uh, of course, dxt equals utdt. That means that the derivative of the uh, position is the velocity. No surprise with this. And this equation is given for the velocity of the particles. I will, I will forget the, the third one because I, I won't use it afterwards. So here you recover the, the, the pressure gradient and some terms, uh, which, I, which, which I will talk about later on. And uh, please notice that there is a Brownian motion W at the end of, the, of this equation that makes the, the, the system uh, stochastic. Okay, so how do you compute brackets of u and brackets of uh, ui, uj? Okay, so again, as I told you, we, we are going to run numerically some, some particles. And at the end, what you want to, to know is uh, what is the wind velocity at this point. For example, if you put a wind farm uh, and a windmill at, at some precise location, you want to have the, the wind velocity at this location. For that, we will average the, the velocities of the particles that are located around this, this uh, uh, point, and this will provide the, the, the wind velocity at this point. Okay? So you, we, we, go, we go from the Lagrangian formulation to an Eulerian quantity, okay? uh, thanks, to, thanks to Monte Carlo averages, actually. And this is what is written here, actually. Uh, the, the density, uh, uh, the Eulerian density, of the particles is computed thanks to an average of the Lagrangian one. In other words, and maybe you can just focus on this one, if you want to know the average of u at some point x, you just uh, um, multiply vi by the, the Lagrangian uh, uh, density, and you divide by the, the average, which, which exactly is the formula for a conditional expectation in, in probability. Okay? So this means this is the, 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 the expectation of u i t, knowing that x t equals x. Okay? That means that I take all the particles that have a position x t equals x, okay? and, I, and I compute their average velocity. And this, this gives me exactly the Eulerian velocity at position x. Okay? Again, remember that a particle carries both its location and its velocity. So when you compute a, a conditional expectation knowing that x of the particle equals to uh, an, egg, an x that you chose in the, in the domain, then you, 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 are, you are considering the computation of a Monte Carlo average of uh, particles around the position x. Of course, this is from the continuous point of view, and xt equals x, in the numerical uh, context has to be uh, defined with a nearest grid point or, uh, or some, okay, some, some approximation. Okay, I, I don't want to, to go too much into details with the Foucault-Planck equation, but we can discuss about that later on. From, from the, the, the density of the, uh, of the, of the, equa from the equations I, I showed you here, 
you can compute the, the Fokker-Planck equation associated to the, to the density FL, which is a PDE, okay? And if you take this PDE and you multiply it by dv d phi and you integrate, then you recover exactly the mass conservation equation, okay? If you do the same thing, but you multiply by v dv d phi, then you recover the first momentum equation of your Euler or Navier-Stokes equation, Euler, Euler here, okay? And if you multiply by vi, vj, et cetera, you obtain exactly the, 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 the other um, uh, equations that I showed uh, a few slides ago on the, on the second, second order. So in summary, and here I use quotes, of course, huh, but it's just to say that if you take brackets of our Lagrangian model with the particles, then you, 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 you recover your Euler model that I, I showed at the beginning. So this is just to say that the, the Lagrangian model that, that I showed at, at the beginning was compatible in a way with the, the Navier-Stokes or Euler equations that we are running uh, in the, at, at the large scale. Okay? And of course, this has been uh, uh, studied really uh, seriously by Mireille and uh, and um, a former uh, PhD student, Jean-François Jabir, with very nice results of uh, existence and uniqueness of, of solutions. Okay. Um, so now the, the specific SDM model, I, I just uh, wrote more precisely the terms that were in red uh, a, a few minutes ago. So this is what is run in our code. So it's, uh, okay, again, it's an equation uh, very simple on, on the position. If you de derive the position, you get the velocity. And for the velocity, we have this one, where uh, K is the um, uh, turbulent kinetic energy. So it's actually the sum of the second uh, order, uh, so second momentum of, of the velocity. And epsilon is the, is the um, production of kinetic energy. And it, it has to be defined, and I will come, come to it afterwards. And from the numerical point of view, we'll, you will see that we use a, a kind of a prediction correction uh, uh, scheme as a Chorin and Temam. And so you, you, you recover the pressure thanks to a Poisson problem, classically, as, as we do in, uh, in, in uh, fluid dynamics. Okay? So it means that the, 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 I will come back to that, but the, the, the numerical scheme is done in the Lagrangian part for the particles, and when you correct uh, the, the pressure, it's done in the, in, the Eulerian, uh, in the Eulerian system. So you have to, to go back and forth from the Lagrange to the Euler coordinates uh, every time in the code, but I will come, come back to it. So uh, to this, you have to add some boundary conditions, and in the, in the, in the SD uh, configuration, that how it works. So Vx is actually just the velocity that is imposed at the boundary of our domain. Okay? So it's boundary condition. And that means that when the particle reaches the boundary, then this, these two terms make the, the particle get the correct velocity imposed by the, the large-scale simulation. Okay? This is written here. This ensures that the, the conditional expectation of u with respect to xt equals x, where x is on the boundary, is exactly vx. So just a, a few words on the boundary layer theory. So we are interested in a, in a domain which is approximately 1,000 meters high. Uh, it, it corresponds to the, to the size of the, of the atmospheric boundary layer. And inside this, you have a sublayer which is called the surface layer, where uh, uh, important things occur. And inside this, you have, a, you have the rough, roughness layer, which is again a, a, smaller, um, a, a smaller layer. But actually, this one is not taken into account in the, well, it's taken into account, but it's not uh, simulated by the code. It's just parameterized thanks to a, a roughness parameter. I will come back to it. So in, in our code, we simulate this, but with a parametrization of the blue part, which, uh, which is very difficult to, <laughs> to simulate at, uh, at small scales, of course. Okay? So on the ground, the goal is to, to account for the log low in the, in the surface layer, okay, in the green one. 
the log law is, I guess a lot, lots of you know, know about this, but uh, the, the thing is that you, have a, you, you want to reach a, a vertical profile in, in Z of, the, of, this, of, this, uh, of this kind with a U star, which is given by the second momentum, and uh, K is a constant, and Z0, again, is the roughness length which is a parameter which provides uh, information regarding the, the configuration in the in the in the um, in the sublayer. Okay. So, for example, on, on the on the ocean, on, uh, uh, Z zero is almost zero. But if you have uh, buildings or things like that, Z zero is a, a few tens of meters or something like that. So it's a it's a typical length that is used in the model, but it's a parameter. And in the whole domain, so on, on, the, uh, on the whole uh, uh, atmospheric boundary layer, uh, we use this formula for the pseudo dissipation. Remember that epsilon was, uh, was coming into the equations a few minutes ago. And uh, Lm is the mixing length, so it's, it, it, it explains how the, the, the turbulence is created on the ground and, uh, and uh, in, the, in the layer. Again, I don't want to, to to talk too much about this because it could take it could take a few <laughs> a few hours actually, but I, I have a lots of uh, lots of documents regarding this. So if you have questions and and uh, queries about this, I can I can I can provide uh, lots of information. So again, k you can compute it thanks to your uh, your particles with this formula. Okay, it's again a conditional expectation, and epsilon is a par is parameterized things. Thanks to this formula. Okay, and then we can go to the to the numerics. So again, uh, th this is our domain, and as I told you, we drop a lot of particles inside the the, the domain. Uh, we have an external uh, force, an external velocity, which is provided by the large scale simulation. And uh, if you want to compute f of u, whatever f you have. Uh, you do just a, a Monte Carlo average of the of the particle field, okay? So you compute f of u k. K is uh, is an index for the particle. For every particle, you compute f of u k, and you just uh, make sure that uh, this particle k is located in the close to the part to the position x, okay? So it means that uh, if if x here is away from the position of x, uh, this capital X k, then this is equal to zero, okay? And, and uh, on the contrary, if it's located in the, in the control cell around x, then this is one, and this is what is written here, okay? So it's just an indicator of whether your particle is close to the position you're looking at or not. And if yes, okay, this is one, this is a, the sum of the, of the j corresponding to the particles in, uh, at this position, and that's it. So it's just an average. F of u is just an average of the f of uk, where k is the, the index over the particle field. So, so this is one, one, one um, time step of the, of the algorithm. Um, so you start by computing uh, a new velocity, thanks uh, a new position. Sorry, thanks to the former velocity, and uh, you compute uh, thanks to uh, a layer, a layer uh, scheme for uh, stochastic uh, equations. The, the these terms, you you forget the pressure term for the moment. Then, you you make a correction of the particles because. Um, uh, you, we, we rely on the, on the hypothesis that the, the, the density is constant here, so which is a very strong hypothesis. Uh, we, we agree that it's, uh, it's, not, it's not correct at this scale. I mean, in, in a few centimeters or, or with, within a meter of, of, uh, of vertical uh, size, it's, it's reasonable, but over uh, tens of meters, it's not. So that, that's something that has to be uh, improved. But for the moment, we rely on this approximation. So if we want to have a, um, uh, a constant density, that means that from the particular point of view, we have to uh, have a, a uniform repartition of the, of the particles in the domain. And since, since we've just moved the particles, thanks to this equation, we have to do some uh, uh, optimal transport problem, actually, 
to, to remove the cloud of particles from the position it has to a new one, which is a uniform uh, distribution. And why, why is, it, is this an optimal transport problem? Is that you don't want to move the particle too, too far from the place there, because it's not, what we are doing here is not physical, okay? So you don't want to, to, um, to, to take some physical information from one part to, of the domain to the other part. You want to stay close to the place where you, you were, okay? So that's why it's an opti optimal transport problem. And this step has been, uh, has been um, done in the SEMRAX 2007. Uh, the, the, the code has been written and the method has been validated, etc. And uh, the, the, last, the last step is to, to correct the, the particle velocity, this time not the particle position, but velocity, thanks to the classical uh, Poisson equation for the pressure. And here, what, what I, I want to, to, to stress on is that it's, it's, a, it's an Eulerian equation. Okay? <laughs> so uh, after step one and step two, you compute from the Lagrangian uh, 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 information on the particles, you compute the Eulerian uh, field, and this is only an equation on the Eulerian field. Okay? So it's, it's pretty fast, actually, because you can have many, many, many particles, but uh, here in the, in the box, uh, this kind, of, this kind of, of thing can be done very, very easily, thanks to a po fast Poisson solver, such as fish, fish pack or that kind of thing. And of course, classically, you, you, you correct the particle velocity from the, uh, on, the, uh, on the particle field. OK. So validation now. Uh, we, we just we compared the, the simulations with the, the, the LES method that, that is used by classically, uh, let's say, by uh, geophysicists, and in particular, in particular uh, Philippe Drobinski. So the computational domain is three kilometer, one kilometer large in uh, horizontal uh, um, dimensions and uh, almost eight, 800 meters in the, in the vertical. So it's, it's, class, it's approximately the size of the atmospheric uh, boundary layer. <coughs> okay, and what you can see here is uh, three couples of curves. So uh, f these are the variances of U, V, and W, and each time you have computed with LES or with our model. And, uh, okay, it's, it, they, are, they, they look very similar, uh, even if in the, uh, close, to, to, close to the ground, okay, sorry, so this is the altitude, and this is the variances in, uh, in, in, in Y. So, close to the ground, close to X equals zero, which is Z equals zero, actually, we have a few discrepancies, but afterwards it's, it's pretty good. And here, it's the same with the, with the um, covariances. Uh, yes, covariances. So U, UW, VW, etc. Okay, so oh, it, it, it can compare pretty well to, uh, to uh, LES. And uh, here are the, the main uh, momentum. So that's the, the U velocity, U in the uh, west, east, uh, direction, and uh, this is north-south. <coughs> and, um, okay, you can see that in the uh, one, 100 first meters, you have this, this log low that I talked to you about. Uh, and again, this is uh, a comparison between LES and, uh, and SDM, which is uh, at several, several times, and uh, even after a long, a long time of simulation, it's, it's really good. Again, we have some, some discrepancies uh, uh, on the floor for the 4V. <coughs> um, maybe I have... Yeah. Okay, and now towards uh, wind farm simulation. So this was validated with, with no wind farm inside the, the domain. And uh, uh, Christian Paris at Inria Chile put some, uh, some uh, actuator disk model into the, the numerical code to simulate the, the presence of, uh, of windmills. <coughs> okay, so I can show you what um, uh, typical production of, uh, of kinetic uh, turbulent kinetic energy uh, beyond the, the, the mill. Okay, so you have a constant velocity in U in, uh, coming from the left and uh, the mill turns, and this is the production of a turbulent kinetic energy behind the, behind the mill. Okay. This is done with uh, Numesis, the, the numerical platform uh, of Inria uh, Sophie Antipolis. And finally, 
we just validated this, uh, this model thanks to uh, realistic wind data <coughs> provided by uh, Fernando Portearel uh, in, uh, in a PFL. So he made up a, a small wind tunnel, one, one meter high, in which he implemented some, uh, some, uh, some windmills and, uh, and uh, many, um, many measures. He has many data on this. And uh, OK, this is the configuration. You have a, a mill at, uh, at, uh, at maybe one meter from the, from the entrance. You have a, a constant wind coming from the left. And you, you want to see uh, the, the, the profile of the velocity uh, everywhere. So this, you, as you can see, the, the wall moves. It's just to see in 3D the, the velocity field uh, you know, from the numerical point of view. OK, so that's just the, the configuration. And when, what you can see here is the, the velocity computed at several, several spots. Okay, so this is x. You have your, your mill here. The wind is coming this, this way. And the first, the, 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 the first simulation is computed here. So this is the vertical profile of the u velocity just behind the mill. So as you can see, there is this uh, kind of... Uh, of uh, belly here, which is uh, due to the fact that um, the, 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 the mill pumps some energy from the wind to, to, to produce some electricity, okay, of course. So this is why the, the U velocity is, it diminishes just after the, 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 the mill. Okay? So in blue, you have the SDM simulation. In green, you, you can barely see it, but it's the, the measurements from Porte Agel. And in red, it's the, um, the Jensen Wake Effect model, which is classically used by, uh, by wind solvers for uh, EDF and, uh, and uh, GDF Suez, etc. In, in their, uh, so what is interesting here is that uh, SDM does better. And the more you go on the right, the further you go from the mill, okay? And at, at the end, you almost don't see anymore the, 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 the impact of the mill uh, on, on, the vertical, uh, on the vertical profile. And, and if, I, if I drew a, a, a last plot, you would have that kind of thing, uh, which, which would be the, the profile without any uh, impact of the, of the mill. OK. So that, that was the validation we, we did with uh, Fernando Porteagel. And, sorry, and I think that's it. For uh, yes, for this uh, for this presentation. So again, a, a few conclusions and perspectives. Uh, Lagrangian formula uh, formulation. So this is new and uh, for for downscaling techniques at, at that scale. Uh, theoretical problems in probability theory rates. So a few achievements have been done by uh, Mireille Bossi and uh, Jean-François Jabir, as I told you. So the, the link with meteorology has been done thanks to a calibration and comparison both with uh, experimental data and LES methods that are classically used in that, uh, in that field. And, um, and as I told you at the very beginning, our numerical simulations also provide some variability on the field, which is interesting. Of course, uh, we have a lot, a lot of improvements to do. Um, Non-flat domains, it's almost done, actually. We are dealing with uh, non-flat domains, which, which is not very easy, but it's almost done. But the non-neutral case means uh, rho, rho non-constant. Okay, so it would imply probably uh, uh, an equation on the temperature, because you cannot um, take rid of the temperature evolution at that, at that scale. In the wind tunnel, the, the reason why our simulations are quite good with, in comparison with the data is that is one, one meter high, the, temp the temperature is constant, and everything is uh, in a lab, uh, clean, etc. So, but we, we don't want to, to, to uh, test uh, SDM now on a wind farm simulation. Okay, we, we are sure that the, the prediction would not be correct, because we are missing some physics still. Okay, and of course we need to do some uh, optimization and parallelization, and I wanted to end with this, because one of the, one of the um, key arguments of using a stochastic uh, and particular method is that it can be parallelized very easily, well, most, mm, more easily than, uh, than uh, with the classical deterministic tools, because there is, no, there, are, there is no interaction between the particles themselves. They actually interact through the Eulerian field. Okay, in the equation, you have, a, you have an equation on, on the particle, and you have a link with the Eulerian field, so of course they interact 
uh, with each other from the continuous point of view, but in the, in, the, in the numerical simulation, they interact through the Eulerian field. So if at every time step you compute the Eulerian field, then you can, you can completely parallelize the, 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 the evolution on the particles, which, which we think is interesting. But still, we have to do it. OK, and you can uh, browse sdm.inria.fr. We, we have some, uh, some more explications and explanations, sorry, and, uh, and, uh, and simulations. I'm done for this uh, first talk. Thank you for your attention. Il faut que tu appuies en bas, en dessous. En dessous. Okay, so uh, for this first talk, uh, maybe we can take time for a few questions. Please. Thank you. So, so you said that um, you will talk about uh, the fact that your method do not have to respect the CFL condition. Ah, yes. But in fact, you didn't say no. Yes, thing. yes, yes. You're right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yes. Uh, Actually, there is a hidden CFL condition. Well, on, on stochastic uh, particular uh, algorithms, there is no. Okay, but here, um, um, when we do the, the, the optimal transport uh, thing, for example, uh, we we don't want to move to move the particles too far from their their um, uh, previous position for for physical reasons. And that is actually a hidden CFL because it means that uh, you don't want the particle to cross too many cells uh, in, in, one, uh, in one time step. So it's, it's exactly a CFL condition, actually. So it's not, well, it's not, uh, th there is no theory about this, but uh, in, in numerical cases, uh, we, we, could, we could absolutely uh, um, um, observe that uh, we, we could not take any time step. Uh, there was a, there was a condition on the time step, of course, and linked to the, of course, to the to the side of the of the mesh. Okay, is there another question? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you said that, that uh, your uh, your method uh, would not work on a real uh, wind farm. So for the time being, what is used to build or to, to, to make choice concerning wind farms? Yes, uh, for the moment, it's, um, you have uh, softwares uh, like, um, again, what, what is used in the, in the industry. Uh, it's mostly interpolation on, on the, on the uh, on the large scale. Okay, so they, of course they use some meteorological data provided by a WARF, the WARF or whatever uh, weather forecasting system. But at the end, when they want some, some information locally, it mostly works with interpolations. Yes, so, so there is no physics. What I mean is there is no physics in the downscaling uh, uh, systems that are used today in, the, in that kind of... Uh, of, of but uh, how do they take into account the presence of meal and so the on? presence of? Of meal. Uh, for that, they use the same kind of thing with the actuator disk. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite... Uh, well, it's, it's not difficult. I mean, it's, uh, it's a force, mechanic force that you, you add at the... At the at the right hand side of the equations, and it's not it's not a big deal. I mean, the 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 the, the, the meal. But f f the, the what the, the the most important point is to have the velocity at some you know specific locations. Getting rid of the mills for the moment, even getting rid of the mills, the way they they downscale the information is done thanks to interpolations, which is. Uh, which is completely false. But don't you think that uh, your method, even at its level of development, wouldn't give better result than uh, pure interpolations? I don't know. I don't know because the, the, the fact that the temperature is not taken into account is really a big deal, I think. Mm. Because, you know, the, the wind, uh, uh, the, 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 the thermal effects at the... At the at the, near the ground are really, really uh, important. So I, would, do I, I wouldn't, I don't want to, uh, to rank too bad, uh, too, too bad methods, you know. <laughs> but these effects are taken into account uh, in the interpolation yes, methods? Yes, yes, okay. yes. 
Yes, because they, they interpolate the, the velocity and the temperature and everything provided by the large scale. So, in a way, they, they, they are taking it into account. Yes. Okay. So, another comment or a question? So, thank you again. Thank you. So.